Damn, girl, you thick. Okay, once you've gone back to your base with your rewards, what you can do is you can then make an antler pickaxe. This allows you to mine the tin and the copper, as I said. So you make your pickaxe. I've got mine here. This is an iron one. And then what you want to do is you want to head for the nearest black forest. Now, in your adventures, you probably should have found some black forest by now. We're going to run there and I'm going to show you what to do next. Once you're in the black forest, what you want to do is you'll just want to run along the coast. As you can see, there's the black forest. And here you go, we have found some tin. So you want to just get your pick out. Here's mine, obviously a little better than yours. But you just swing at that and you'll mine the tin. Now you'll need a fair, you won't need as much tin as you'll need copper. But tin is, is pretty abundant. It's a lot easier to get compared to copper. So to find copper, what you need to do is just head into the biome itself. And you'll find large rocks, large green colored rocks. Now the copper ore... So they look very similar, but the copper ore will have like color. You'll see like sparkling bits in the uh, edges of it. Okay, so here you can see the sparkling in the rock. So that's how you know it's copper. So what you want to do again, it's the same thing as a tin and just swing your pick. So there you can see we've got our copper and our tin. So you're going to need for bronze stuff, you need two copper ingots and one tin. So you get one for one. You get For every one copper ore you put into the smelter, you get one bar out. And then to make bronze, you need two copper bars at uh, one tin ingot. Now, what you're going to need to actually make the smelter is these things called certling cores. Now, these can be found in the dungeons. Here's one I've marked earlier. So what you want to do is just head inside, clear the dungeon, and you'll find the certling cores. A tip for when you're in the dungeon and you're finding that you're getting or taking a little bit too much damage what you can do is you can just kite the mobs back to here and sit on here and the mobs can't actually hit you now the archers can shoot you but you know you can't have it always also crafting the torches the torches are actually a pretty good way of, of dealing with the mobs pretty early on okay so if i swing the actual torch you can see i've set them on fire and then i can run back to the entrance set them on fire run away and you can progress through like that so a good tip for the dungeons is when you're actually going through you want to either go right and just take every right door and then when you finish when you come to an end you go backwards and find the next right turn and just continuously do that or left just make sure you follow one so you don't just think oh i'm going to go here and then oh i don't want to go down there yet i want to go right here because otherwise you'll get lost pretty easily that's a pretty good tip for making your way around another thing that you need to be wary of is these piles of bones so you see that pile there that's where they spawn so there can only be like two at a time but they'll continuously respawn so <laughs> what you want to do is you want to try and clear this at the same time as clearing the mobs because otherwise they'll just keep spawning on you now here we go we've got this room so you can see these cores here this is what you need to make the furnace you need five of these to make a furnace and five to make the charcoal burner so if you just have five what you can do is you can place down the charcoal smelt or make some charcoal uh, and then deconstruct it pick up the resources and place the smelter okay so now that you've got some ore on stored away what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make yourself you probably need to make a hoe so that's five wood two stone so i've got one in here what the hoe allows you to do is it allows you to flatten the land so what you do is right click and you can pick options so if you want to raise the ground you can do that but it costs stone and then you can level the ground so what this allows you to do is if you left click it brings the ground up to the level of your feet or down and creates one flat plane that you can work with so this is quite useful if you're trying to place down big things on uneven ground so now that we've leveled this out somewhat what you're going to do is go to eight right click and then you'll want the charcoal kiln first so this requires 20 stone and five of those cores i showed you and then you just load this up with wood as you can see my wood's going in and this will produce charcoal what we want to then do is remove that get our resources back because it costs the exact same to make this the smelter so again 
You just select that, select that, and place it somewhere flat. And then what you want to do is you add ore and stuff to the left side. So I've added all the ore I had on me, and then the coal there. There you can see it popped out some copper bars. This little icon in the top right just means that you can't go for a teleporter with the bar in your inventory. So once you've finished smelting your metal up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build yourself the forge. Now this requires, you can see the resources at the bottom, so 4 stone, 4 coal, 10 wood and 6 copper. This allows you to start making stuff out of copper and initially you'll be able to make yourself the uh, copper knife and then once you've got tin and copper you can then make t uh, bronze ingots with one tin and two copper so you just craft these as you can see i've already got a few in my inventory now the thir first thing i'd recommend making would be to craft yourself a bronze axe so this is four wood eight bronze and two leather scraps this axe allows you to get fine wood from chopping down uh, birch trees and oak trees now that you've got your bronze axe, what you can now do is you can cut birch. So you just want to go ahead and find yourself some birch trees in the meadows. And you're going to want to just cut them down. Also oak trees as well. This will give you the next tier of wood, which is fine wood. So as you can see there, we've got fine wood and normal wood. So you're going to need a fair bit of fine wood, but it unlocks some of the best items in the game. Also what you're going to need is you're going to need to find some pine trees. If you haven't already cut a pine tree, when you cut them you get yourselves core wood logs. Now these are just firs, these give normal uh, wood, they don't give anything exciting. But when you find yourself the pine trees, which are these for instance, when you cut them down, you can see I've now got core wood. Now the combination of core wood and fine wood will allow you to make a fine wood bow which is the next best bow that you can make also it's important to note when you kill these gray dwarfs they drop gray dwarf eyes now these are, will be very important for what i'm about to show you next okay so when you're back at base you want to go over to your workbench and you want to scroll down until you can see the fine wood bow so you're also going to see need some deer hides for this so it's 10 fine wood 10 core wood and two deer hide you can also upgrade this when you've got it just by uh, going in here and upgrading it. And it's a much, much better bow and you'll probably appreciate how much less drop it has as well. The next thing I'm gonna show you is how portals work. Now, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need 20 fine wood logs, 10 gray dwarf eyes, and two certain cores for each portal. Now, the way that portals work is that they are matched pairs. So for every portal you wanna make, you need another one somewhere else with the same corresponding tag. You also just need to chuck down a workbench to be able to place a portal so you place it down with the resources that i said earlier and then you give it a tag so we're going to call this one test for now and you can see it says unconnected and then what you're going to want to do is build a second one wherever you want it to be so say you found a really cool new biome you build one at your base give it a name go to the biome and then give it the same name and then what it will do is that will happen and you've connected the two and then you simply just jump through takes a moment and you pop out the other side now one thing is you can actually take ores through portals but they do allow you to move great distances really quickly and um, they'll change your your playthrough completely okay so by this point you're gonna want to have yourself at least a full copper gear set and a decently upgraded bow now you also need to have found the location for the elder but that one you usually find one of the stones pretty early so you just want to come over to the location and you want to make sure that you've got some ancient seeds now you get these from um i think it's the gray dwarf shamans and the piles in the wood so what you want to do is just put them on your hotbar and just use them on the uh, sacrifice table also if there's a troll you probably want to kill him Dude, why are these trolls ruining my videos? Okay, so the way I did this guy was I just basically, he has this attack where these pop out the ground. These are pretty easy to avoid. And the next one is this one. So to stop this, I just hid behind these pillars and just popped out and shot him. And just continued round that way. So yeah, just keep running around using the pillars as cover. 
it's the best way I've found of soloing it. Again, all the mod all the bosses I've defeated, I've defeated solo. Um, people asking if it's harder to play solo. I don't know. I've not really played any differently. But yeah, you want to avoid those attacks. They do quite a lot of damage when you don't have the best armor in the game. And then finish him off. Job done. Damn, girl, you thick. Okay, so when he pops, you'll get the trophy and the swamp key. So we'll talk about the swamp key. The swamp key allows you to open the crypts in the swamp areas. Now, in the swamp area, you're going to start... Once you get into the crypts, you'll be able to find the iron ore, which is the next set of gear. So now you've got the crypt key, you're going to want to head into the swamps. This is what the swamps look like. They're a pretty dangerous place. Um, one thing I will say about these is here, you can see that there's these these creatures. Now, these are certlings. And funnily enough, this is a good way to actually farm certling cores. So you can see they're actually dropping cores. You actually get coal as well from this place. So if you find one of these, it's worth setting a portal up nearby. Turnip seeds, very rare. Only found here in the swamp so far from my So as you can see here, there's a glowing green torch. Now you see it's got the gate. So if I drop the key real quick and try and open it, you say it needs a swamp key. So you open the crypt gate, go inside, and you've got the sunken crypts. Now there will be lots of mobs in here. So you want to deal with them. You'll probably want some healing stuff and other resources whilst you're doing it. Also, beware of the blobs. And then, so you can find iron ore in these chests, also the chains. The chains are really rare. You're running a heap all the chains you can get. You also find one of these in here, which will update your map for the next boss. So yeah, you're just gonna wanna break down these walls with a pickaxe. Whatever pickaxe you have is good. They all seem to work. Again, another one of these, check for chests and grab all the loot. The chests also contain the uh, the scrap iron that you need and then you just take that to a smelter i generally create myself like four operating bases so yeah as you can see you get the uh, the scrap iron from the chest and also the ancient bark you can get for this from the trees once you get the copper axe as uh, the bronze axe as well so yeah you just want to gather as much as you can and then go home and smelt it the same way that i showed you the smelting of the copper and that's it for this video guys so if you liked it don't forget to leave a like subscribe and all that good stuff thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one you're ruining my video so i'm gonna ruin your life